Sometimes in business, when you want to grow, you need to let go. We're going to talk about outsourcing your physician career and your life on this episode of Bootstrap MD. Hey guys, it's Dr. Michael Ming with Bootstrap MD. Several years ago, I created a product that helped businesses outsource their career, outsource their life. And I think many physicians, we struggle when we have other people do our tasks. And it can be very daunting. You know, we didn't get to where we are um, without the help of others. And sometimes we forget about that. We tend to, I've said this in the past, we tend to have control issues. And you're only going to be able to scale your business somewhat. You're going to hit that level because you can't do it on your own. Well, there was a book that came out that explored different million dollar businesses. And very few, once they got to that one or $1.5 million level, they couldn't grow because if you're someone who in your business, you have, you're the bottleneck that you have to see all the patients, that you have to answer all the phone calls. You have to be the one inputting all of the information in that kind of medical record. You're going to only grow your business so far. And to be honest, you're probably going to burn out. And I learned that the hard way when starting my businesses. I know for many of you, and I hear from you guys, you're saying, you know, my myself or my husband, he doesn't like to give away part of our business and we do everything we can to hold on to everything. Your business is not going to grow. I spoke to my my father who had his own clinic a few years ago and he said, my, my business only grew until I realized that I didn't have to be in the business. I had other, other doctors to do all the work and now you know, I'm thriving, my business is growing and I only hit that, that one level. And so for many of us, whether you are someone who is an employed doctor or you're starting your own practice or maybe you're doing some locals on your own, we all need to be able to let go. So here are some strategies that I think could be helpful to you. Now, for an employed physician, if you work in a hospital, of course, there's only so much that you're going to do. You are limited by the amount of autonomy. But there are some things that you could be doing on your own that makes you focus on specific activities in your business that's going to really help you in your career. So I created when I created my clinic, I realized that early on that I couldn't be the bottleneck. I created my clinics based upon that I don't have to personally be there. I could have other doctors, I could have other um, providers who would be doing my work and I needed to focus on my own business. You know, the, the, the famous book E-Myth covers this quite extensively. You need to start working on your business, not being in your business. And oftentimes we are the bottleneck for our business. So when you're looking to outsource, what I encourage you to do is take out a piece of paper and you start going down all the tasks in your, in your practice, in your every day. What are the things that you are doing right now that somebody else could be doing probably better than you and could be affordable that you could hire somebody to do these services. Again, my practice didn't flourish until I realized I needed to let go. So when you're looking at those tasks, there are some qualities that I want you to assign on those tasks. First of all, do you enjoy the work? You know, if you enjoy performing these tasks, I don't want to take that away from you because that contributes, you know, to your overall happiness in your career. Um, you know, I own both clinical and non-clinical businesses. I enjoy the marketing of these businesses. Yeah, I could probably outsource that or I could have a marketing company do that, but I personally, personally enjoy that. And that's talking about the overall marketing of it. Let's say you're going to be doing online marketing and you're going to be, um, you want to understand is what, how much does it cost to acquire a customer in, in marketing? Now, that doesn't mean I don't like certain aspects of it. For example, I would, I would love to give somebody the opportunity to put together my social media posts, to uh, work on, you know, starting up our Instagram page, etc. But I want to understand the overall aspect of marketing. That's something that I enjoy doing. It's something I was brought up as someone to get involved in online marketing early on. And it's something that I like to do. 
But if you don't like doing any of that, it's better for you to hire a company to focusing on the marketing aspect of it. Now, if you own your own clinic, that's where a lot of us has gotten into trouble because we focused on what we were best at, which was performing the clinical duties of it. But if you don't understand the other aspects of your business, you, those are some things that you need to know. Now, of course, you can outsource that later on. Maybe you don't enjoy the business part of it. But if you want to have a successful business, you need to understand the intricacies of making that business, what, you, what it takes for you to, become, to make a profit with your business, and then you can move on forward. But first off, look at the enjoyment. Secondly, you want to focus on tasks that are revenue generating. What are the tasks that make you the most money? If you're a doctor who loves to do procedures and your procedures are the ones that's bringing in the bacon, bringing in the money coming in there, and then there are other type of procedures that you may not want to be involved with, then that's, then that's what you need to focus on. For example, if you're a dermatologist and you enjoy doing Mohs surgery and that's what is a big money maker for you, shouldn't you have somebody else focus on the other aspects of your business that maybe it's part of your training, but let's say you don't need to work on removing warts or skin tags and you can hire a, a physician's assistant or a nurse practitioner or a registered nurse if, you, if they can do that in your area to perform those parts of your business. Again, it has to be something that you enjoy. If, if, if it's something that you, you do and you don't enjoy it, then that's something you need to take into consideration. You can divide it into so many different ways. What I want to look at are what are tasks that only I can do? You know, what are the ones that I need to do? So things like running the business, um, you know, examining like your competition, understanding, um, you know, every aspect of your business, it, that's what you need to focus on. I perceive myself as more of the CEO of my business rather than just the employee. Other tasks that, what I call our, our equivalent tasks, these are tasks that, that maybe you could do them, but you know, let's say money was no object, could you hire somebody to do those? You know, I'm not someone who needs to brush up my ego. I see some doctors who, where they get in trouble, for example, is the clinic is all about them. They name the clinic about themselves. But what happens is if you're Dr. Smith and everything is goes to Dr. John Smith and all the, you know, you're, you have the essence of the clinic, guess what's going to happen when you're going to try to um, let go parts of your, your clinic? You're going to be kind of stuck because all the patients are going to want to see Dr. John Smith. They're not going to want to see Dr. Mary Jones, who's your associate. And that's going to be, that's where you're going to, you're going to be struggling if you're going to be, you know, naming the business after yourself. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you, if you name your clinic something kind of generic, then that's something that you could have partners coming in and seeing those, uh, you know, those patients for you. So divide looking at tasks that only you can do, tasks that are what I call equivalent tasks, and then look at what I call outsourced tasks or tasks that you can outsource or insource. Are there people on your team in your business that can be performing those type of it, the tasks? Um, so what are, focusing on the outsourced tasks, you know, what are the clinics, what are the typical clinic tasks that you generally see? Well, generally we see medical billing, right? That's usually something where you can have a company who focuses specifically on the medical billing, you know, that's probably what I would first start with is having another company who could do it faster and do it more cost effectively than probably you can. Now, again, it's something in your business. If you take insurance, I don't. But if that's something in your business, you need to understand like what to making sure that you've done your due diligence, make sure this is a, a billing company that you can trust and that, and that uh, you you know, because of, if there's a billing who is doing things that you don't know about, that can run you into trouble. Um, IT is something where you can uh, outsource. Um, in terms of transcription, you know, I don't understand why most people would want to have someone in source to do transcription, which you can get it so inexpensively now with these trans transcription companies. You know, I use uh, for my non clinical um, transcriptions, I use Rev.com. But there are other transcription companies that focus on medical uh, businesses that are out there that you can use. And again, 
most of these are done outside of the country and they're inexpensive. And there's no reason why you should be doing your own transcription. Um, you can have, uh, and then in terms of insourcing, you know, look at your staff. What are their, what are the types of tasks that they can perform? When I first started my clinic, I made sure that my, um, whoever I hired, uh, let's say it was an administrative part, they were mostly medical assistant had training, but they could also do both front and back office, front office and back office uh, parts of it. So they can use those interchangeably. You know, you want to make sure when you're looking at hiring and unfortunately firing, which is part of a running business, that you find and, and locate the best people there. So don't, when you're hiring people, make sure they've got different types of strengths uh, that you can utilize uh, because again, your most expensive um, output that you're going to be doing is payroll. So you want to make sure that you've got people who are multifaceted that can perform different types of tasks. So, you know, these are for these ideas or these strategies are things they're, they're not ideas. These are strategies that, that have been going on for a while, but let's say you're someone who's employed. What can you do right now in your position? Again, for many of us, if you work in a hospital, you only have so much autonomy. There's only so much that you can do. But I would argue that many of these hospitals out there, I mean, if you're looking at the amount of hospitals, I think that one of the statistics I showed is that, you know, an average doctor brings into a hospital, you know, nearly two point, I think it was like $2.4 million uh, was the latest uh, survey. And, and if you're a higher specialist such as cardiology, or orthopedics, it could be $3.4, $3.6 million. And again, your income is probably getting about, makes up about 10%. I don't understand why they can't have you have a scribe once they realize how cost effective it can be. Because there really is no reason why you should be staying up late at night, you know, probably not getting paid for tasks where you're inputting information, doing data entry, um, you know, hiring a medical scribe who's in the room that could be, allow you to become more efficient. It helps their bottom line. And that's something that you really should be able to um, negotiate. So look at all your different tasks that you do and not just in your clinical life, look in your personal life as well. What are the things that you can be doing that can you know, really improve your life? What are the things that you're doing right now that you could hire somebody fifteen or twenty dollars, twenty five dollars in doing. I've had a personal assistant for going on 12, 13 years. My personal assistant I now have had for the last decade. We love her, and she helps every aspect of um, parts of my business that I don't personally like to do. I, I'm someone I don't like being on the phone, so she answers and works on my helps me with my consulting in terms of scheduling potential clients, scheduling. Um, using online scheduling tools, uh, look, using, um, you know, setting my call, just personal stuff, like getting the dog ready for the dog groomer. Um, I've had her get on the calls when I'm contesting something in a utility bill, you know, <laughs> like a cable bill or something like that. Um, picking up dry cleaning, setting up, um, if I'm speaking somewhere, setting up uh, uh, airline tickets, travel, there's so many things that you guys are doing on your own and you think you're going to save a few dollars. It's not worth your time. You know, the average doctor, let's say you make about $200 an hour, you know, and you guys are doing $20 an hour tasks. You got to stop doing that. You know, when I first got a, um, I bought a house, um, first out of residency and, you know, I spend every weekend doing weeding and I hate gardening. If you love gardening and you enjoy it, then do that. For me, I hated doing it. And it's like, why am I doing this when I can hire landscapers here to do that? Again, if you personally love doing it, more power to you. I didn't. So we've, our family, we've tried to um, outsource some things that we enjoy, either from um, nannies or tutoring or house cleaning. Um, but, you know, if you love cooking, like my wife enjoys cooking, we don't outsource that, but that could be another task that you could do where you could bring in you can have meals now and now with technology there's so many different services that you can do that can really um, make your life more enjoyable um, so with technology um, using virtual assistance is, a, is another way you know there are some 
uh, companies out there like onlinejobs.ph, uh, where you can hire uh, someone, uh, a Filipino who knows English. They can do a lot of these virtual tasks for $500 to $1,000 or so a month. Um, you can go to places like freelancer.com, fiverr.com to perform simple tasks, you know, that you could be doing, you know. Um, these are all things that you need to start thinking about doing and it's going to really enrich your life. Again, most doctors, you know, what we're seeing right now is most doctors are now being employed and being hospitalized. I'm not a, and most doctors don't like it. They don't like um, being employed and losing autonomy. Many of the doctors, I think, according to one survey, said that 45 years or younger doctors are significantly more likely to work for a hospital or hospital-owned medical group compared to physicians in the next age bracket up. And they understand that it's worrying, worrisome. But I think, you know, to have better control, to be in a better position, I would rather um, risk having more opportunities that are out there um, than losing my autonomy. That's my autonomy is very, very important to me. So the good news is there are more non-traditional options that are out there. I know many doctors have switched to telemedicine type practices, having a more of a locums type life. These are things that you can do no matter what specialty for the most part. You know, of course I know there's some where you're always gonna have to be in the hospital, there's nothing you can do about it, but start thinking about different areas where you know you could transition into other areas, go part-time and, and look at to, to other things. Um, for me, what's important for me is we only have so much time on this earth. I wanna spend as much time you know, having fun as best I can. And, and there are some other options that you can do. Um, you know, one way is for, that I've been helping doctors is to look at starting your own practice, a cash-based practice, but really, you know, stopped you from being handcuffed from insurance. Um, and uh, we've noticed more and more doctors are moving into that direction. So whatever it is for you, it could be a, you know, this week, start thinking about a simple task that you're doing right now. You don't realize what you're doing it right now that you can outsource. It's going to make a world of difference. Start slow. And I think overall, it's going to really, you know, enrich your life. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing to outsource aspects of your life. Again, we only have so much time on this earth. The more we realize that, the better our lives are going to be enriched. Thanks for listening, guys, and as always, keep moving forward. This episode was sponsored by Paradise Practice. If you're a physician or healthcare professional and you're looking to start your own insurance-free practice, but not sure where to start, or maybe just need a little bit of hand-holding so you can start up that cash pay practice, give us a call. Go to paradisepractice.com slash apply. We've been working with doctors for the last year or so. We've had experience creating insurance-free practices and have had several clinics here in California. We'd love to have the opportunity to work with you. Just go to paradisepractice.com slash apply to find out more information.